Here. Kinsella? Here. Meyer? Here. Hull? Here. Anderson? Here. Rajewitz? Here. Carpenter? Here. Hart? Here. Silsby? Here. Hayden? Seibert? Here. Martinson? Here. Elmore? Schneider? Here. I'm sorry. I'm sure those two gentlemen will show up in a second. A roll call of department heads. Police Chief Clyde. <clears throat> Archie Blankson. Here. Mike Flair. Here. Ken Vaughn. Here. Bryce Carlisle. Here. Amy Matrick. Here. Tim Gregowitz. Here. Jim Schneider. Here. Andrew Spearman. Here. Emily Fultz. Here. Chuck Schaefer. Here. Bob Sable. Here. Chief Clay is excused. He was off today. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we have Boy Scout Troop 13 from Faith Church in O'Fallon. And they're here in great numbers tonight working in their citizenship and community. <coughs> and I would ask that they would, uh, one or a few of them, come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please all stand? Scouts for I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. <coughs> Gentlemen, thank you. And best of luck as we continue to work on your eagle as we talked a little earlier. That's quite an accomplishment. And uh, it looks like there's several of you uh, getting closer as I look at your rank on your uniform. So keep up the good work and uh, get those up. Uh, Get those mandatory merit badges as soon as you can. Um, okay, at this time, we have no public hearings this evening, but open public participation. If anyone would like to address the City Council this evening, please step up to the microphone, give your name and address, try to keep your marks for two or three minutes, uh, if at all possible. Yes, sir. Rick Brown, 632 South Pennsylvania Avenue, all along line. Um, you're going to hear or you're going to vote tonight on six cases from the Zoning Board of Appeals. You're only going to approve two of them. I know that already. Um, you know, I believe in the bottom of my heart that the legal department in this city is absolutely corrupt. In the way that it has gotten to the Economic Development Planning and Zoning Department, in order to use the zoning ordinance to take people's property in violation of the Constitution of the United States. You know, one of the cases uh, in particular um, at uh, North Jackson Street, the property was zoned multifamily. There's a dwelling sitting there that has three apartments in it. It was properly zoned. It has fairly new heating and cooling equipment in there. Looks like 90, 95% equipment, um, efficient furnaces and uh, air conditioning systems, 100 amp up to code electrical systems. And with one vote tonight, you are going to eliminate one third of that piece of property. Now, I believe that that is a taking in violation of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. The city has done it hundreds, if not thousands of times. Now, you want people to move into this city. You want people to bring businesses to this city. And when this city steals property from people in that manner, without paying them <coughs> just compensation or giving them due process of law, you're not going to get it. This city will go right down the toilet. Thank you. Anyone else this evening like to speak? Yes, sir. Michael Hackberg, 701 Centerville. Uh, I'd like to make a correction that uh, was made at last meeting about TIFs. Last year, the library's levy request was $1,185,000. They received $1,185,417.50 because of penny rounding. Having TIFs or not having TIFs does not change the overall amount the library collects. The Library Board of Review sets a le levy request, and this is the amount that is collected from the taxpayers. 
if all TIFs were to go away and a library requested $1,185,000, they would still collect $1,185,417.50. TIF 3 does not take money away from the library. Second item. Uh, on tonight's agenda, 17F, uh, there's no company name mentioned in the hiring of this legal firm. By not releasing the name of, to the public, we have no chance to know if there are any campaign contributions behind this. We don't know if somebody's brother-in-law works for the firm. We're just kept in the dark. And it's too late to raise concerns if you tell us now what the name of the company is. It should have been released long ago to the public what company you're hiring. I would ask my alderman to make a motion to table this item until they are properly informed and able to make a decision that will be in the best interest of the taxpayers. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Hearing none, I will close public participation. This time we will uh, we have the uh, privilege this evening to ask uh, Daryl Coons, he had asked uh, Jim Schneider and I if he could come forward and deal with the uh, character word of the month, peace. Reverend Coons. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I address you and the Board of Aldermen and everyone who's here. Uh, first of all, I want to just say that it's Dave Martinson's fault that I'm here, but probably the best thing that ever happened to me was 11 years ago when he asked me to be the fire chaplain for Belleville. As I looked at uh, the word for this month, the character word, peace, I have to tell you that I wrote about six sermons preparing, thinking of all the ways I could tell you about all the mistakes that I've made down through the years in not living in harmony with those around me and working with those around me. Uh, then this morning, I looked at the word once again on the nice little poster that we have from the Basic Initiative, and it struck me as never before that we're talking about living in harmony. My bachelor's degree is in music education, and over the years that has cropped up several times. One of the things that is really interesting about music is that it is most beautiful and most pleasing to the ear when it is harmony. Uh, we love doing barbershop harmonies and hearing symphony orchestras that play wonderful harmonies. Occasionally, in the piece of music, there will be a dissonance, uh, a sound that just doesn't quite seem like it ought to be there, and it almost makes us cringe. What works out best is when that dissonance resolves back into harmony. When we're working in the community and when we're working in our families, there are times when we have dissonance. There are times when we don't agree about everything. In the past, I've handled that in entirely the wrong way. I grew up at a time when we watched all the war movies and tele television that taught us the way to peace was by beating somebody down. But that's not always the way to peace. And telling people, because I said so, is not always the way to peace. I'd probably still be a pastor if I had been a little bit more peaceful. <laughs> So I recognize tonight that there is always going to be the dissonance, but I would encourage all of us who are gathered here, and it's great to see these scouts here, to learn to find a way to disagree and then to resolve into harmony once again. I think the, the city of Belleville will become much stronger when we, we all become citizens of character and we learn, learn to live in harmony with each other. Thank you. Thank you. Are you also gonna, you got the chore, Jim, do you? Since sure. my voice is fading, I asked Jim. Daryl's also gonna read the proclamation I signed for 2012 National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month. And I, I thought about changing my name tag for that, but I thank you for letting me have the honor of doing this. I work for the Alzheimer's Association. <coughs> That's why I thank Jim. 
Here is the proclamation. Whereas Alzheimer's disease, the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, and the only cause of death among the top 10 in the country that cannot be prevented, cured, or even slowed is a public health crisis causing hardship and heartbreak to a great many people, families, caregivers, and communities, including the city of Belleville. And whereas 210,000 people afflicted by Alzheimer's disease reside in Illinois, and whereas 5.4 million Americans are now living with Alzheimer's disease with one additional person diagnosed every 68 seconds. And whereas the Alzheimer's Association is the world leader in Alzheimer's care, support, and research, through whose efforts diagnostic tools are becoming more accurate, treatments more effective, and a cure more promising. And whereas the Alzheimer's Association is encouraging our residents to partic participate in the National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month throughout the month of November by creating awareness, fundraising, volunteering, or donating at www.alzheimers.org forward slash STL. And whereas the City Council of Belleville wishes to show its support for the goals and work of the Alzheimer's Association by encouraging learning about Alzheimer's and taking action to end Alzheimer's. Now therefore, I, Mark W. Eckert, Mayor of the City of Belleville, Illinois, do hereby proclaim November 2012 as National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month in the City of Belleville, Illinois, asking its citizens to join in the observance. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Belleville to be affixed this fifth day of November, 2012. Well, thank you for reading that. And, and to all of us, I think, uh, unfortunately, I think we all in recent years, um, unfortunately, probably no more than one person, family, affected. And it's uh, become pretty, uh, um, pretty much a, a major concern throughout the region. And um, so certainly to uh, pay some focus to this and, uh, and certainly do what we can to uh, care for those families who are dealing with people with this terrible disease. <coughs> it really does uh, affect a lot of people and quality of life. So thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. And could I just say that as the Illinois Outreach Coordinator, if any of you have any questions, if you have a group that would like to hear about Alzheimer's, if you have a family member and need some assistance, give me a call. I'm right here in Belleville and uh, work out of my home office for this. Thanks, Daryl. Appreciate it very much. Okay, at this time, we're going to go on to the regular part of the meeting. Um, I'd ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the regular city council meeting held October 15, 2012. What's your pleasure? Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the file of the minutes of the October 15, 2012 meeting. I'll second that. We got a motion by Alderman Heisler, second by Alderman Mason. So, Alderman, yes. On page five, under item number six, could we add what we were talking about zoning that does not apply to fraternity houses, strictly authorized dormitories? Yeah, we. It's in, in that we're talking about uh, the Lindenwood zoning with the fraternity. We want to add the words fraternity houses. <laughs> I simply asked the question, Mr. Plenty answered that this does not apply to fraternity houses. Okay, so we have accepted. Okay. okay, and one other thing, on page nine, under the discussion about the library, I would like to note that Mr. Spearman did say that all of the taxes, the tax increase that the library levy went to salary pay. Yeah, there is that time correct with your statement. <coughs> okay. You guys also agree with that, those two additions. Hearing those two corrections or uh, additions to the minutes, yes, we got a motion and a second. There's no further discussion. All in favor of accepting the motion with those corrections as stated, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Claims to be a little disbursements. Yes, Your Honor, I move to have the claims payroll and disbursements be paid. We got a motion by Alderman Heisler. Any discussion about the claims? 
Roll call. Someone to build, we can collect from the attempt to do that. It's a rarity when we find someone to call it. Okay, so, so what are we building for? City services or your time? How is that working? We, we, we would be building for my time and costs that have been incurred by the city. Okay, but you're a salaried employee, so how do we arrive at what we're I keep, dealing with? I keep track of time and individual files and then I present to the court a petition based upon what our firm's hourly rate would be if we were handling it on an hourly basis. Okay. So then and that the is approved by the court. Okay. Okay. All right. Can you then tell me, I noticed on the Bucky's case there was recent activity. Can you catch us up on that? Well, the city's motion for partial summary judgment was granted. Uh, that motion for partial summary judgment based on the fact that they were asking the car wash be uh, part of it be uh, approved. And you might recall that when they filed, they didn't actually ask for the uh, car wash. So that has been stricken from their request, so they would not be allowed under any circumstances to have a car wash in the Okay, so... The issue still remains as to whether or not they can, uh, they can do anything. All the other issues. So do you see this as a positive for the city? Yes. yes. Okay. And so what's going to happen next on this case? Is it's a separate status hearing in January. The next step really will be up to the plaintiff as to whether or not they want to proceed with the case based upon this uh, ruling by the court. May I ask him to speak into the microphone? I can't oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I can't 
I guess we're having a private conversation. <laughs> Approximately 10 days ago, um, 10 days, two weeks, less than that. And uh, attorney uh, Julie Brooke talked to me this week and uh, indicated that we should hear something according to the judge within, well, when she told me that the other day, she thought within another 10 days or so we should have a, a ruling. Okay. Thank you. So I'm waiting to hear. Okay. I'm hoping by mid, by mid November would be what she told me. So hope to have a ruling. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second to approve the city attorney's report dated October 19, 2012. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Zoning Board of Appeals advisory reports. Case number 63 is Julie Hernandez requesting a use variance in order to keep two parties with a 16-foot steel storage shed contained on the property at 501 South 1st Street for 18 months in a D1 life. Industry zoning just for the zoning board of appeals request to next group. Your Honor, the zoning board I mean said that June 1st of 2013. And that was the deadline, right? Up, that it has to be removed by that? Yes. So yes. That, that's, uh, should be included in the motion, Mr. Seibert? Yes, sir. So you're approving, you're making a motion, but to understand that the, the deadline for removing these is June 1st, 2013. 2013. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Martinson. Do I hear discussion? Yes, ma'am. Um, is it 16 foot or 18 foot for the trailer? I was at zoning and I thought this was 16 foot. I don't, I don't know. I, I was under the impression it was 16 feet, but the applicants here maybe they can clarify that. I mean, just so our wording is right here, because I also had the 18 months highlighted, but. Do we know the length of the trailers, ladies? The 40 foot long? Party by 60. Okay. Party by 60. Yes, sir. Um, and would they be allowed to renew to have this if this is for business purposes? violation of the ordinance we need to file a ticket uh, issue a ticket against them or file a lawsuit against us because they removed it. Okay. I go by a lot of those couple of matches that we need again. Those mattresses are for the trash, right? We'll take care of that. Get them out of I saw this weekend. Chuck remind me tomorrow I'll tell you this. Okay. We have a motion and a second to uh, um, I guess a hold the recommendation, but noting that it's June 1st, 2013 is the deadline for removal of uh, case number 63. All in favor of uh, this motion and have the proper ordinance drawn and signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Case number 64, Rajon Wright, requesting a use of the order to operate a natural hair and dreadlock business as a home occupation at 7506 West Main Street in a C1 light commercial zoning district. So the Board of Appeals request to be approved. Your Honor, I would uh, accept the, make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the Zoning Board 
and have a proper ordinance drawn. Motion by Alderman Musgrove, do I hear a second? I'll second. Second by Alderman Arlett, do I hear discussion? All in favor of approving case number 64 and have the proper ordinance drawn, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Case number 65, Luke Allen, still water preparation. Requesting the use of area in order to utilize an existing duplex that has been vacant for more than one year at 813 Centerville Avenue, located in an A1 single family zone. <coughs> Zoning Board of Appeals requests be denied. Your Honor, I move that we uh, concur with the Zoning Board and deny this request. Second. Motion by Alderman Hayden to deny, second by Alderman Sills, be concurring with the Zoning Board on case number 65. Any discussion? All in favor of denial, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Case number 66, Patrick Boss and Nancy Schulte, requesting an area of all variance in order to utilize the properties at 6, 8, and 10 South Church Street as two single-family dwellings located in a C2 heavy commercial zoning district. Both dwellings are located on one lot that is less than the required minimum <coughs> of 10,000 square feet. Zoning Board of Appeals request be approved. I move to apply and have the proper ordinance drawn. Motion by Alderman Seibert. Second. Second by Alderman Martinson. To approve case number 66 and have the proper ordinance drawn. All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Case number 67, BNS Land Trust, Samantha Gorger. Requesting a use variance in order to use the property at 216 and 218 North Jackson Street as a three family dwelling in an A1 single family residential zoning district. Zoning Board of Appeals request be approved with stipulations. I'm going to comply with the recommendation of the Zoning Board and have the proper ordinance drawn. Okay, there are stipulations with this, Emily. It says in the name of applicant. Okay, we have a second on this motion. Yes, we have a motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Seibert. In the name of applicant only, would that be in his main only stipulation? Okay, this is for case number 67. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, have the proper ordinance drawn, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Case number 68, Kurt Smith's Sporting Goods. Requesting a signed installation permit for the area of special control in order to install a 19.303 total square feet of flush mounted window signage at 280 <coughs> Street, located in a C2 heavy commercial zoning district. Zoning Board of Appeals requests be granted. To comply with the recommendation of the Zoning Board, that's proper ordinance drawn. Second. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Carpenter to approve case number 68 and have the proper ordinance drawn. Discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. More reports. Alderman Anderson. Yes, Your Honor. You have the mass to serve the committee on to make a motion to approve the long term control plan construction pay request number 28 and party new John and two million for a total amount of one million one hundred sixteen thousand six hundred ninety six dollars and seventy five cents. And I salute. Motion by Alderman Anderson, second by Alderman Hayden to approve that request coming from Master Sewer. Any discussion on that? Roll call. Eisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rodgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Selsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? Aye. <coughs> motion carries. Um, I ask for a motion to approve an amendment to the annexation agreement between the City of Belleville and Carol J. Schneider, Stephen K. Thomas, Leslie Thomas Ellison, Michelle Thomas Ward, and Mary Thomas Robillard for Bell Valley 3 Industrial Park. Do I hear a motion? No, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Seibert. Do I hear a second? Second, second by Alderman Martinson. Any discussion? Could you just kind of give us some background on this? This is the agreement we have with these folks to develop and sell the property uh, that they own the farm to be turned into Bell Valley 3. We have not, uh, we're, we're working towards making um, a plan and committing hopefully some money in this next budget, we're gonna hope, uh, will be the proposal to start the infrastructure so that we can have lots available 
to continue to grow the industrial park. We've got sections one and two, I guess, Eric, just about totally full, right? Yeah, there's, a, there's only one unsold lot there, and this will, uh, it's basically a five-year extension of the existing agreement. Yeah. So that we, and they're agreeable. They're agreeable. Yeah, they've, already signed, they've already signed the agreement. Right. They, they signed it. It's just an extension to what we started. We, for a little bit of history, a number of years ago, we had a grant from the state of Illinois to put the road through there. And then we were approved the grant, but it was never funded. So that's where the slow up started when the money dried up <coughs> from the state. Uh, the 1.5 billion we were supposed to get for the uh, tire plaza extension. When that money never developed, we, we've been faced with each year now. And, and then we kind of waited until we got Royce's, where's Royce at? Until we got the sewer through there, we got all that worked out, so now that's all done. Uh, so we're now poised really to start looking at how we would develop that and lay that out. And if I'm not mistaken, I guess we're in the process of going to, we're going to re, we, we had some more stuff to put into it, right? Yeah. That was part of it. We're going to reissue our request for qualifications. Right, until they have the plan for this, in this third edition. So that'll be coming probably in what, January, probably December, January? Yeah, soon. So, okay, so that's where we're at. It's just been a slow process, but they're all in agreement. So this vote tonight to say, uh, the approval tonight will give us a chance to keep working forward with what I think is very important to continue to develop Bell Valley, Bell Valley 3, the industrial park. So we have a motion, we have a second. And ask for a roll call vote. Eisler? Aye. 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 It is completely inoperable and unrepairable. So moved. Motion by Alderman. Motion by Alderman Kinsella. Who is the second? Second. Alderman Kelmore. Discussion. Roll call. Okay. 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 Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? Aye. Motion carries. Ask for a motion to approve a solicitor's license request for Paul R. Peterson to solicit an ins insulation program through Ameren, Illinois, Act One Energy. I hear a motion. Motion by Alderman Rudgewitz. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Martinson. Do I hear discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'd ask for a motion to approve request for permission from the city council to allow that we would um, host the uh, business after hours and have loud alcohol in the presses for the Belfort, for the um, city's business after hours with the Chamber of Commerce for the uh, Christmas after hours, which would be hosted December 6th, 2012, from 5 until 7 p.m. at 510 West Main Street. So moved. Motion by Alderman Meyer, do I hear a second? Okay. Second by Alderman Seibert. Discussion? Are we, are we the host or are we just providing the venue? We work with the chamber. Okay. I mean, they've given us, since we're basically the chamber's biggest member these days, they always ask that person if they want the December okay. business after hours. Okay. So it's kind of a partnership to get with the chamber, I guess okay. is the best way. Okay. Who's, who's buying? Who's buying? The, the, the chamber will work out a, a down, they rotate different uh, people who have alcohol license who get a special use permit to come in and provide it, and they'll get somebody <coughs> and they pay, everybody pays their, pay your own rates, whatever. Okay, that's that. Yeah, that's as soon as I, we're not uh, hanging over there. Yeah. There's no free drinks. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Take a Before it changes, we have a motion and a second to approve this event. Uh, roll call. Aye. 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 Aye.
next item. I ask for a motion on behalf of the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners to hire Brian Gregory, a probationary fireman, to fill the vacancy for, from a retirement. Second. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Seibert. Discussion? Roll call. Aye, sir. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Paul? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Selsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Markinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I ask for a motion on behalf of police and fire commissioners to promote firefighter Joseph Laird to engineer to uh, to fill a vacancy from a retirement. Second. Motion by Alderman Sussman. Second. 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 Second by Alderman Heisler. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Mustro? Aye. Arlen? Aye. Motion carries. Communications. A communication request from St. Clair County Historical <coughs> Preservation Commission requesting permission to have Woodland Court closed to through traffic for their candlelight house tour on Sunday, December 9, 2012, from 1 p.m. until 7 p.m. Motion to Motion by Alderman Meyer, second. <coughs> second by Alderman Rudrowitz. Do I hear discussion? All in favor of that request, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. We have no petitions this evening. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only resolution 3117, 3118, 3119, and 3120. So, second. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Consilla. All in favor of the motion to read by title only signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 3117, a resolution transfer community development. <coughs> I hear a motion. Motion to approve by Alderman Silsby. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Seibert. That's the resolution 3117, transferring community development block grant funds. Question? Yes. Uh, I am recalled. Did this go for finance? Yeah, the gate right here. Right? This isn't a budget amendment in the city's budget. <coughs> yeah, it, it's, it's not a mention. Of, it's not an amendment in our budget. It's an amendment to the, to the agreement we have with the county. Does that make sense? Makes sense. I think we're moving. You know, Two hundred thousand dollars and at least go to some kind of committee for discussion. Eric, if it's in the past, have we ever we've done anything different? No, I mean, this is, we've done several of these in the past few years. Uh, just, uh, another, the reason I asked it, Your Honor, is that these questions could have been, been addressed at the finance uh, committee. Uh, Do you have a particular question? Yes. With, it's shown here, South 22nd, Washington Street, the very first one. Existing now is $249,195.99, transferring. 100,000 to South 23rd Street, which I understand the project. Um, what is this existing balance going to go? The remaining existing balance, where is it going? If I'm reading this right, TY10, is that for the year 2010? Well, I'm going to go back um, a couple of years. Um, before the crime lab got here, or it was all at the time that the crime lab was said they were going to come to Belleville. Uh, so, <coughs> The city made a, a decision to, to fix uh, 22nd Street, West Washington, and 23rd Street around the crime lab there because those streets were in bad condition. Um, but in that time, uh, the crime lab, crime lab had a couple delays, um, so it got pushed off a, about a year or two. Um, so we still had to use that money. So we started, we scaled down the project. We did one project that was 22nd in West Washington. That happened a couple years ago. So we separate that off. And in the next year with the CDBG dollars, we made 23rd Street, South 23rd Street, its own project. Okay, but we still had those dollars in 22nd, West Washington, and the 23rd Street, um, fiscal year 10. 
is what you're looking at. So, the, the, and, and we estimated um, the whole project, what we thought it was going to cost. Um, but in the time that we bid 22nd in West Washington, we got good bids. Um, and in, in the time that we bid the South 23rd Street, it came in way under. So we have extra dollars, and we're just shifting those dollars. Um, we shifted 100,000, I don't have the exact numbers, but 100,000 to South 23rd, and uh, we have South 1st Street South that's First coming up next year. To resurface that through sidewalks, curbs, and what is the <coughs> Mascuda Avenue? Mascuda Avenue. Um, that is that's what we're working towards now. Right. Uh, there, there, there's a project there that's in a historic district um, that uh, we're hoping to, to get more dollars to, to push towards that. Um, there still may not be enough, but we hope we hope that we can get good bids for the Mascuda Avenue project too. <coughs> We're just we're making sure we don't lose any of those dollars. We're shifting them forward in the fiscal years. So, where, where would I go to ask for the people in South Lake and West Lincoln to see if they can get a shift? They're going to get theirs through the TIF. We're, we're proposing that that project's done next year with TIF. The, the transfers, the transfers, we have to transfer to existing CPD projects if we've gone to South Lake and then we have to amend uh, our CBG budget, we have to reapply actually through those fiscal years. So we, the quickest and most efficient way to use these funds was shift them to existing approved projects. Right, if we were gonna add South 8th, South 8th as a project, um, that would come probably in uh, March or April when we're asking um, for CDBG dollars to do that project. But those dollars won't come available until November of, of that year, November of 2013. So we couldn't start you know, designing that project or working on that project until after the, the dollars were appropriated. We're looking at the, the, the Lincoln Street from Central Avenue to 8th Street. Should be a TIF project next spring. Lincoln and 8th, that's, that's the plan. And then 8th Street, we're still trying to figure out which are, Tim's getting cost estimates. Those are two pretty expensive projects because the sidewalks are all shot, the curbs are all shot, and the road needs to totally be road in order to be done. So those two projects there, we're getting we're getting there. But you've got uh, our award over there has a lot of streets. So we did 10th, as you know, we did 11th, we did Parts of Union, we did State Street, we did Cleveland Avenue, and we're going to have to look around and see. But we're for sure going to get we're sure going to get Lincoln this year. From, from from Central Avenue to 8th Street, that'll get done for sure. Can, can, can I ask, uh, in the future, did these be sent to finance just so the finance committee has an idea of what's going on with these types of funds before they get to the council floor? Yeah, yeah. This, was, this was, this was uh, a lot of this was in the budget part, so uh, the plan for last year's uh, tip money, et cetera, at CDBG. I just think <laughs> Some committee before we get to council floor should be looking at this, and the finance committee is the one that protects the first. <coughs> I think. Well, these CDBG dollars do not come through uh, the city's finances. It doesn't go through the finance department. Well, I understand that the, fi the finance committee oversees all the sure. city finances. Okay. Let me go back and see. We have a motion now to. Uh, we have a motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any more questions? Lost my train of thought. Roll call. Eisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hulk. Hulk. Anderson. Aye. Rogerwitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martin. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Resolution number 3118, a resolution in request for permission from IDOT to close Route 159 at Columbus Square for the Santa Claus Parade on November 23, 2012, from 9.30 a.m. until 12 noon. Yeah. Motion to approve. 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 Discussion about the Christmas parade closing resolution. One quick question for legal counsel. 
Are you comfortable with a half a million dollars aggregate on the uh, insurance? I, I'm sure that standard has nothing to do with this parade. I'm just saying, is that a little bit outdated? It might be. It, it might be, but we still have our own insurance. So I, mean, I don't, I don't right. think the city has any particular risk or additional exposure. I just encourage you to consider maybe updating that with Mayor. We'll look at it. We have a motion to be on the second to approve resolution 3118 roll call. Aye, sir. Aye. 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 Hart? Aye. Selsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlo? Aye. 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 Resolution 3119, a resolution of the City of Bella, Illinois, accepting a proposal for underwriting, selecting an underwriter in connection with the proposed issuance by the City of its General Obligation Funding Bonds, Series 2012 and acknowledging certain disclosures pursuant to MSRB Rule G-17. Motion by Alderman Silvia, second. Second, Your second Honor. Second by Alderman Heisler. Do we want to say anything now? Is there necessary? Not unless there's questions. Is there any questions regarding this? This is the refinancing of the bonds, yes. Did this one go into more finance? Yes. Yes. Over a, month, over a month ago, it went to finance, and there was a motion from seeing the refinancing, as long as it was over a $30 loan. We refresh which bonds were these, Jamie? And Series 2005 bonds that were paying for the street case, they're being refinanced at lower interest rates. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Graduate. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Markinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Carla. Aye. Motion carries. Resolution number 3120. A resolution approving a bond compliance policy and procedure for the city of Belleville, Illinois. Motion by Alderman Silsby. Second by Alderman. Second by Alderman. Discussion. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hull. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Ordinances. I ask for a motion to read by title only. Ordinances number 7638, 76 party, and 76 party one. Motion by Alderman Cyber, second by Alderman Consilis. All in favor, reading those three ordinances by title only signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number 7638, an artist prohibiting the use of groundwater as a portable water supply by the installation or use of portable water supply wells or by any other method. Motion by Alderman Silsby to approve second 638, second by Alderman Heisler. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. <coughs> Anderson. Aye. Rodewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? Aye. Motion carries. Ordinance number 7640, a zoning ordinance in case number 66, Patrick Boss and Nancy Schultz. Motion to approve. Motion by Alderman second by Alderman Cyber. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Consilla? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rodewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Carla? Aye. Motion carries. Ordinance number 7641, a zoning ordinance in case number 68, first 40 Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Meyer. Discussion? 
Roll call. sometimes large amount of signs at daybreak tomorrow all over city property and right away is appropriate. Well, it's, it's not our, our opinion to decide. There is a law that covers it. city property, um, <coughs> they have no permission because we don't get behind any candidates. Oh, I understand that. So I don't I, think it's I, appropriate. Again, it's not our opinion, it's what the law says. So uh, Mr. Flynn is free to interpret it. Where, but you, I what, where, where are you suggesting that this... Uh, I am suggesting that we not order the street department or the police department to remove any signs tomorrow, that we err on the side of caution. I read what you've provided me, and I, and I don't know if this is accurate or, or, or this current, uh, but what it, what it appears to be, what it appears to be saying is that uh, if there is a public building and it gets into whether or not there's two or more floors, uh, that there are certain uh, designated 100 horizontal feet from the entrance where nothing can be done. So I, I don't know if, if these <coughs> measurements apply to any polling place owned by the city and how it may affect a, a city polling place. So I guess I would need to know 
where the polling place is in question, and then we would make a determination as to how this particular statute may affect that particular polling place. Do you believe the only two city properties are the Nichols Center and the, the Parks Department is only Well, those two are for sure. We don't have any at the firehouse, do we, Chief? I think some firehouses are, but I don't think any Belmont firehouses. I think this is our only two city buildings. And then it says the marker shall be placed 100 horizontal feet from each entrance to the polling room view. So I, I, I don't think it means anything can be placed on the building itself, on our public oh, no, building. No. But can you place it in a parking lot on the edge of your lot? On a city parking lot? No, I don't think so. Because? Because it's city property. But it says, for the hours the polls are open, it is public property, it is not private I don't, I don't think it says that. And I, I just disagree with you on that. Okay. So we, we maintain the right to control that property. Correct, correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, uh, you know, if that's something at the state election, election board that we have to learn about before the next election, we'll have to learn about it. But I think part of the model, uh, based on the city attorney's uh, last minute interpretation being questioned by this, we're going to proceed as we have in the past. We're not going to let anybody come and put signs up on city property tomorrow uh, in the morning. We'll take them down. It's not, the city property is neutral property. It's owned by all the citizens. And it's not to be a, um, yeah, that, I really a billboard. I think that's the letter of the law that it is public forum. Well, I think so. Well, we're we're just, all right, but how about electioneering? If it's more than 100 feet away from the door. I think that's between you and the state's attorney and the other people who monitor the elections. I, I'm not, you know, I mean, um, this stage of the game, if you're going to be out electioneering right outside the polls, you have to convince them that you're within that legal limit. Uh, I personally wouldn't do it. You know, I just I wouldn't. So I mean, I think that's that's something that the state's attorney is going to have people out watching some of the polls, sure. and and Bobby Delaney's office, the St. Clair County uh, uh, clerk, oversees the St. Clair County elections, and if they get a call or a complaint, they're going to investigate, and it'll be their call. I mean. On that situation, <coughs> right? Yeah, it, it's not a city matter. It's not a city matter when it comes to overseeing the election. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I mean, I would, I would just recommend against it. I would think it'd be a poor taste. I, I just would. Okay. Once again, let's see where we're at. Help me, Mrs. Fields. Um, no, oh, motor fuel claims the amount of $11,413.19. Motion by Alvin Cybert. Motion by Alvin Cybert. Second by Alvin Martinson. Any discussion on the motor fuel claims? Roll call. Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? Aye. 
Motion carries. At this time, I'd ask for a motion to approve the agreement between the City of Belmont and the Laborers International Union of North America, local number 459. Contract uh, will be dated May 1st, 2012 to April 30th, 2015. What's your pleasure? We have a motion by Alderman Schneider again. Second by Alderman Arlen again. Any discussion? Roll call. Isler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Douglas. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selby. Aye. Haynes. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. 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 Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlen. Aye. Motion carried. This time I'd ask for a motion to hire legal counsel of uh, Carl Addison. It's Addison, Brits, Kelly, Cooper, <coughs> Gilbert, and Dean Nof Nofo, LTD. Do we have to make a motion to postpone the meeting before we take it out? No. No. It's just he's not here tonight. We'll just go over it. He'll be back on the agenda next month. Next meeting. Uh, the motion I'm asking for is to hire legal counsel of Addison's, uh, Carl Addison's firm, as just stated, to represent the city of Belleville in reference to a labor relations um, challenge. We call it. It's in reference to a uh, matter before the Illinois Labor Relations Board, specifically the uh, representation petition filed by the Policeman's uh, Benevolent Labor Committee against the city of Belleville in the case of NDSRC-13-022 before the Illinois Labor Relations Board, uh, which has been filed on behalf of the uh, city's uh, lieutenants and captains in the first department. I so move. Motion by Alderman. Second. Yeah. Still a second by Alderman. Heisler. Discussion. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Regiment. Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Selby? Aye. Hayden? No. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Almore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Your Honor, I just want to state, I was, I want to apologize for being a few minutes late. I got tied up with the uh, National Security Committee, and I just want to state that for the record. That's why I was not here really to say thank you, Here we go. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All favor of adjourn signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed?